I'm going to unbox and review this Wi-Fi 7 mesh system by MSI. I'm going to test with my following Wi-Fi 7 devices, speed test, range test, wired wireless, backhaul, everything like I normally do. And I happen to have the iPhone 16 Pro Max, which is a Wi-Fi 7 device, but this one can't go as fast as these two. It's a hardware limitation on the iPhone, and I've done a separate video on this. we got an Ethernet cable. It doesn't specify the category. This is the wall mount, so you would attach it to the wall from here, and this slides into the router, and then this is the part where it screws in. So basically, if I bring the router close up, it, it fits into these two slots and it screws in over here. So basically it fits in like that and then you screw this part in and it rests on the wall like this. The wall anchors and the screws and stuff and the mini little screw. We got the sync button, we got two gigabit ports, we have a 2.5 gigabit port, we have a power port right there and we have the factory reset on the bottom. There's some vents on the bottom, I'm also hiding some info right there. And we have a little LED indicator right here. We got some vents, obviously, and some vents on the top. And we got a 7, I'm assuming to indicate this is a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system. And the other unit is exactly the same. So they're both routers, except the one that hooks up to your modem or your ONT acts as the router. So we got a little quick start guide right here. Basically tells us to get the app. And this is what the LEDs indicate. And we got the power port, which is 100 to 240 volts. Output is 18 watts, which is... 12 volts at 1.5 amps and this is the power plug right here i had a chance to play with these i set it up as my main mesh system i did all my speed test range tests i have all those numbers right here we'll get into that momentarily there were no drops no disconnections or anything like that there was one very minor issue when i was setting up and the reason i say very minor is because what happened was i have a bunch of ring cameras i have other cameras as well but i have a bunch of ring cameras different models and stuff and for some reason my ring spotlight camera didn't connect to this automatically. So I had to reset the Ring Spotlight camera and then after that, it then connected to it. So that was the only issue, minor issue that I ran into that I basically had to reset that device. Okay, so let's just jump in with internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds unless of course the router itself can't go that fast. So in my case, my internet speeds are 5 gigs up and down, and this router is actually capping those speeds to 2.5. Now, because when my internet comes in at 5, it actually gets capped to 2.5, and then when it goes out of this to my computer via Ethernet, that actually be becomes capped to gigabit speed. So when I do an Ethernet speed test on my computer, I actually get just under gigabit speeds. However, in this case, on a Wi-Fi device, when I do a speed test on this, at this router, at this the main router's location, this thing can still go up to 2.5 because of this port. So it's not limited yet at this port. So when I actually do it at Wi-Fi speed test, I got faster than those speeds. So I got one point, a little above 1.7 both for the download and the upload. So uh, basically a lot faster than Ethernet, only on the main one. Next, we jump into a local speed test. So I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And in the case of wired or wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to route to the secondary one, which then jumps to the main one, which then goes to the server. This way I isolate the mesh system. I'm no longer relying on my internet service provider nor the public speed test server. Now looking at these speeds, we got just under gigabit speeds. And again, because it's the gigabit port limitation, both in the single router configuration and also in the wired backhaul configuration, again, because we are being capped to gigabit speeds. And for the wireless backhaul, it did decrease in speeds. It wasn't doing too bad, but also not great either because it's a dual band system. Next, we jump into range test. Now, range will vary drastically by location. Essentially, the more obstructions you have, typically the less range you're gonna get. The less obstructions you have, typically the more range you're gonna get. So if you're in between walls, a lot of walls, thick walls, in between floors, all of this stuff can basically degrade your range, essentially. This router was very, very, very interesting. Now, at 20 feet away, there wasn't a drop because really the Wi-Fi can go faster, but because my range tests are based on my local speed test, I got just pretty much the same speeds at 20 feet as if when I'm right next to the router. And then at 50 feet, this is when I'm outside my place, I still pretty much didn't get a drop either. It's still getting very, very fast, and that's because really it's the gigabit port that's limiting this router. And what surprised me the most about this router was at 100 feet, my download speeds were still not a drop, literally getting the same speeds. 
and the upload however did drop but still getting very very good upload speed so overall it actually did really well for the range test however it is really because of the limitation of the gigabit port where it's actually being capped up front rather than being capped later. So that's kind of how the range test for this thing went. So we're gonna talk about setup and configuration. Use the MSI Roamy app. It's available both on the iPhone and on the Android. Super easy to set up. It's a pretty simplified UI, user interface, and but it actually has a decent number of options. And then there's also a website you could go to, basically if you type in the gateway, gateway IP address for this thing, it'll actually go there and then there's more options that you can customize over there. But within the MSI Roamy app, that you, you could set up your main Wi-Fi name and password. You could set up a, and for that one, you could set up MLO, multi-link operation. So if you want the bands to work together for Wi-Fi 7 devices, you can do that. You don't have to do that, up to you. You get a guest Wi-Fi. You get a child SSID, a child Wi-Fi name. And this one is kind of interesting because uh, it's not too common, but one really cool thing about this is that you can actually set time limits for this Wi-Fi. So let's say if you didn't want to set up parental controls, let's just say you can have your kids Wi-Fi devices connect to this SSID, this Wi-Fi name, and then you can actually set time limits. So during certain times, the internet won't work. Granted, they also have parental controls as well. And then finally for SSIDs, Wi-Fi names, basically, there's also an internet of things. So you can have your security cameras connect to that. You can have your you know, smart switches and things of that nature connect to that if you wanted to, completely optional. And then it has some built-in security, so it checks some stuff. There's also parental controls, and, and for parental controls, you can actually block certain things. You could block the device. So you basically make a profile for your child, and then you select the devices they use, and then for that, you can actually filter out certain content, you can block the devices, there's restricted modes, and then you can also get notifications as well. So there's a lot of customization that you get with parental controls that's included in the price. And then you get the normal stuff like QoS, you get the VPN options if you wanna set it up with a VPN. You get, there's an IPTV VLAN option as well if you wanna play with that. And you know, you could do your firmware update. You can also control the LED if you wanna control that. If you want to turn it off and stuff, you can do that as well. And then if you go to the website, which is basically the default gateway IP address. So I think for this one, it was 192.168.10.1, I believe. But basically when you go to the default gateway, all, all of those options are kind of there. And then there's more things you can customize, more specific things you can enable and disable. So it really kind of lets you tinker with more stuff once you go to the website with a computer hooked up via ethernet basically. You can also do it with a Wi-Fi connected device as well. So who is this for? Well, right off the bat, I would say this had very good range. So performance wise, up to gigabit speeds, this was actually a really, really good router. So I would say if you're running wired backhaul up to gigabit speeds, this is a very good router. It can go faster up to 2.5, but because there's only one 2.5 here, you're actually gonna cap those speeds to gigabit anyway. So I would say again, up to gigabit speeds, wired backhaul, fantastic router for that. If you wanna run wireless backhaul, it's not bad for that, but it's also not great for that either. So that's what I would kind of recommend this for. By the way, if you are running wireless backhaul, you can actually use the ports on the secondary one as well to connect to your devices. So that is an option that you can do. And typically, I haven't tested it for this router, but typically you actually get even better speeds doing it that way. So keep that in mind. But overall, again, up to gigabit speeds, wired backhaul, very good range router with a lot of options and options that are included in the price. So that's not true for every router that I review. There are some other good routers out there, but some of those routers do require a separate subscription if you want um, other options. So there it is. So anyways, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, smash that subscribe button, like the video, share the video, and I'll put product links below in case you guys are interested and way more stuff coming. So definitely subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one.